man in the south. I'm going to run the Ku Klux Klan out of Alabama. I'm not going to forget this. A man who stood up for his beliefs. You know what I sometimes wish? The dad hated Negroes. Now, his family must stand up to the anger. Because justice and equality were worth fighting for. Peter Coyote, based on a true story, unconquered next Sunday. I'm Pat Sajak. My new late-night talk show on CBS has to compete with those adult movies on cable. That's why I asked my writers to do some research on the matter. Even now, they're busy working around the clock, studying those films over and over again. Hour after hour, night after night. Apparently, the work is going well. They keep sending out for more movies. Make a break for the Pat Sajak Show premieres tomorrow on CBS. Quick, guess who's been called the best morning host? CBS This Morning's Harry Smith. Do our viewers know something you don't? Watch CBS This Morning. Document shredding, scandal, and dirty tricks. This is an election. Who will be student body president? Phone in your vote on TV 101 Wednesday. This is CBS. People all over the state spent the day digging out from under the snow and trying to keep warm. A plane crash in England today claims the lives of at least 30 people, and authorities say that number will increase. And a needy family in St. Paul moves into their new home today. I'm Cindy Hilcher. And I'm Mike Walcher. The late edition of the Sunday 10 p.m. report is coming up next. Oh, my fellow Texans get kind of ornery when I tell them the best salsa is La Victoria. La Victoria? From California? Look, thicker, fresher, and more authentic. And tastes fantastic. My caddy says they'll get even with me for bad mouthing their picante sauce. But I told him not to worry. <laughs> <laughs> I told him not to worry. Jeez. La Victoria Salsa Picante or Suprema. You just can't miss. Hi, Mom and Dad. Here's a videotape we made on the free Florida vacation we got from Best Buy. We've already been to Disney World, Epcot, and SeaWorld. We spent three nights right near Orlando, and now we're at Daytona Beach for two days of rest and sun. It's a great trip. Buy any item priced over $299 at Best Buy and get a free Florida vacation. Hundreds of items qualify, like this GE refrigerator for just $299.99. Transportation's not included, but there are no strings, no gimmicks, and no timeshare. So if you want to go to Florida, hurry to Best Buy. And my assistant will now demonstrate how to get an Arby's beef and cheddar sandwich at this special price. One just enters Arby's and says... Beef and cheddar's banner. Now in slow motion. Beef and cheddar's banner. That's all. And you'll get Arby's slow-roasted roast beef topped with tangy cheddar cheese sauce for this special price. Now one can even say it backwards. Beef and cheddar's better. On one's head. Beef and cheddar's better. Say beef and cheddar's better and get one for this special price. A snow emergency has been declared in both St. Paul and Minneapolis tonight. And that means a lot of people will have to repark their cars. We'll tell you where you can and can't park. WCCO Television presents Mike Walsher, Cindy Hilger, Mike Fairborn, and Ralph John Fritz. This is the 10 p.m. report. Good evening. We have a late breaking story to tell you about from St. Paul. In St. Paul tonight, three people are dead after a house fire. It happened a couple of hours ago on several streets until 8 p.m. on Tuesday night. In Minneapolis, you cannot park on the odd sides of the streets until 8 o'clock tomorrow night, and then you'll have to move your car again because there's no parking on the even sides of the streets beginning tomorrow night at 8 and lasting until Tuesday night. If you're confused by all this, you can call the Minneapolis Parking Hotline, and the number is 348-SNOW. The winter storm produced record snowfalls in northwestern Minnesota, more than two feet in Fargo-Moorhead. But you didn't have to be up north to get out the shovels and snowblowers today. Caroline Lowe reports on people digging out. It was like shoveling your way out of an icebox today as Twin Cities residents dug out from several inches of snow in temperatures well below zero. 
I don't like it, but what are you going to do? It's Minnesota. If you want to live here, that's what it is. With the wind chill making the weather dangerously cold, doctors warn that on days like this, you should avoid going outside. And when it gets uh, as cold as it is today, particularly with the wind chill, uh, it's possible to get significant frostbite in a very short period of time, minutes. And Dr. Brunette also says that if you do go out, make sure none of your flesh is exposed. And he says it's particularly dangerous for kids and pets. If you have to go out and spend any period of time outdoors, is to uh, do it in small periods of time. If you want to go out and shovel, uh, if you have to go out and shovel, to go out and do it, but uh, don't spend uh, uh, very long outside doing it. Do it in, in bits and pieces. Despite the cold temperatures, we also found a lot of people who chose to be outside today to have some fun. This man wasn't taking any chances before he ventured out to skate on Lake of the Isles. I figured I'd just go outside. I know I'm probably a little crazy, but why not? Bye, Rob! Woo! And over at Theodore Worth Park, we found people braving the cold for a picture-perfect afternoon on the hills. You like it out here today? Uh -huh. How do you feel? Cold. Caroline Lowe, WCCO Television News, The Twin Cities. We want to bring you more information now on that fire at 956 Central Avenue in St. Paul. Pat Kessler just arrived at the scene, and he joins us now live. Pat? Cindy, what's happened here is a rather serious fire. Uh, District Chief Tim Fuller is here with us. The fire department was called at about 12 minutes to 10 o'clock tonight, and we do have some fatals. Uh, Mr. Fuller, tell us exactly what happened here. Well, when we pulled up, we got a call, uh, that several calls of a house fire. We came up to the scene. First company in started to make the front door, and there was a fellow out in front who had been injured, and he said that his family was in there. So uh, you went in after uh, the family, and I understand there are some fatalities. Will you tell us about that? Yeah, we uh, took uh, three victims out of there. Uh, two of them were fatalities. One we sent to the hospital. One is in a, isn't an adult? No, the, uh, one adult, two children. One of the children went to the hospital. And one of the children is in the hospital. You said he was doing rather poorly, but you pulled a child out and an adult, and both of them are dead. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Will you speculate on the cause of the fire tonight? Well, that would be difficult. We've kind of located it. We've uh, put it in the uh, first floor rear of the house so far, but our arson investigators are checking it out further. How many people were in the house? Uh, we've accounted for four. You think there may be a fifth? There may have been five people in the house, so that would give us, uh, so far, we've got three that have survived two fatalities. District Chief Tim Fuller, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Cindy, it looks as if two fatalities, at least, a second child apparently is in a very serious condition, but one child dead, one adult dead, here at 956 Central Avenue in St. Paul. By tomorrow, they should have a better idea of what caused this blaze and uh, what has happened here tonight. It's pretty much out, though, now, Pat? Yes, there's a lot of smoke here, smoke coming from the rear of the building. The fire officials tell us that the heat was very intense when they went in there, and it was isolated to the rear of the building. As I said, the fire is out, but there is still a great deal of smoke pouring from this house here. All right, Pat. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, once again tonight, it's going to get colder, and we've got a few tips in case you get frostbite. It appears in the form of white spots on your skin that are numb to the touch. Now, if you're in an accident with your car, officials say you should stay inside of your car, out of the wind. And you should pack extra blankets and clothes for any trips you make, even if they are short drives. When you get inside, it helps if you immerse your frostbite in warm but not hot water. And, of course, you should call your doctor if you think you have been frostbitten. Firefighters had to battle the cold and the threat of frostbite to fight a fire in Bloomington overnight. That fire broke out just after midnight in the Larson office building at 10700 Lindale Avenue. We'll let the pictures tell you how the firefighters survived the cold. You get wet in your gears. You can't move. Second window down there, we got a lot of fire coming back. It's the wind. It's the it's wind. It's the wind that really makes it bad. The wind is the bad thing. We did not take off those windows on the north side yet. I don't know if you want them on or not. We gotta go around the back of the building. We're going inside. Regulators. <laughs> Man, the masks freeze up. You can't breathe. Fire rolling in a window about 50 feet up. Cramping my arm. Oh, the masks are freezing up. Everybody's getting cold, wet. Keep going right through the coffee in there. You're frozen on your jacket. It's not the heat, it's the 
Very cold. With the wind chill? <laughs> I suppose I don't know. 40 below. Fortunately, nobody was injured in that fire. Authorities still looking for its cause. At least 32 people have died in another plane crash in England. This time, a British Midland Airways 737 crashed 100 miles north of London. The jet, with 125 people on board, was traveling from London to Belfast, Northern Ireland, when it developed engine trouble. Witnesses on the ground reported that the engines were on fire. The plane attempted an emergency landing, but fell short of a runway. At least 76 people were injured in that crash, although some people did walk away from the wreckage. The plane was less than one year old. Tomorrow, Cottage Grove authorities will continue their investigation into who drove the car that killed 17-year-old Lanny LaPlante. Yesterday, police were able to make a more definite link between this car and the car that struck LaPlante on Monday. But police still aren't sure who was driving the car. A woman has told police that she was driving at the time of the accident. The car belongs to a 43-year-old Cottage Grove man. Meanwhile, funeral arrangements have been scheduled for Tuesday for Lanny LaPlante. That service to be held at noon at St. Philip's Lutheran Church in Fridley. 850 teenagers from throughout the state wrapped up a busy week at the Capitol today. They were in St. Paul for the Youth and Government Program, which gives high school students the opportunity to learn about state government firsthand. They debated and discussed close to 100 legislative bills ranging from AIDS to the environment. Not only did the students learn about the political process, they also learned how to work with people. You have to put aside uh, the beliefs or, or your prejudices and really be impartial when you're in a leadership position and you have to make sure that you give everyone an equal opportunity and I'm learning that. The YMCA has sponsored the program for 35 years and several graduates have gone on to hold public offices. Organizers believe while voter apathy is a problem nationwide, this program will spark an interest that will last. Getting more involved and there definitely is no apathy involved in this program whatsoever. It's back to work tomorrow, though, for the state legislature. The lawmakers begin their second week of the legislative session. A needy St. Paul family has a home tonight, thanks to the hard work of a Twin Cities organization dedicated to providing low-cost housing. Habitat for Humanity officially opened the doors to the home this afternoon. And Daryl Savage has the story. A year ago, most of these people didn't know each other. A year ago, Larry and Linda Hayes wanted a house of their own. What a difference a year makes. Thank you, Larry, for all you've done. And with that, the home was handed over. The Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity has done it again. I know it's here, but it hasn't hit, hit me yet. The dedication was held inside this home on the north side of St. Paul. It's the ninth home constructed or renovated in the three-year history of the local chapter of Habitat for Humanity. Most of the people joining in the celebration with the Hazes were volunteers who helped build a foundation and make it all possible. Really grateful I could see these people, the way they work together, you know, helping each other. The Hayes's proudly showed us around their new home. Everything's done now except the carpeting and the landscaping. This may seem like one family story, but it's more than that. There are now 165 churches and nearly 900 volunteers in the Twin Cities working to make more stories like this happen. The organization's director says he won't be finished until there's a chapter in every neighborhood. There's a real grass root kind of uh, feeling that something needs to be done and we need to get in and do it and not wait for some agency or someone to do it for us. This project started with a vacant lot and a lot of enthusiasm. It has ended like a dream. In this day and age, I had never expected anything like this to come about. It has, and these volunteers say it won't be the last time. Daryl Savage, WCCO Television News, St. Paul. Today's house dedication is the first official project by the St. Paul chapter of Habitat for Humanity. And coming up next on the Sunday 10 p.m. report, our Dimension segment. We'll take you behind the scenes of a weekly magazine published by Dayton's. It's called Dayton's Today. And it's a lot more than just a sales brochure. Dimension is next. And later, if you were watching tonight's Sunday movie on CBS, you'll find out why some of the scenes look familiar. The newest, hottest, most exciting line of motorhomes on the market. Sizes 24 to 38 feet. Totally new, low-profile design with more heated storage than basement models.
fantastic, unique floor plans on all models never before seen in the industry. Also, the amazing sunset. All on display by Spickler's Leisure World of Eau Claire at the St. Paul Civic Center Super RV Show, January 10th through the 15th. Be there. These farmers are finding ways to make a Raticane work that are just as practical as Dual or Lasso. Right, Brad? I was making a pass before I incorporated Dual anyway. Now I impregnate Eradicate on my dry fertilizer and follow the field cultivator directly into the bean stubble. I know I saved time and a trip with Eradicate. What about you, Gary? Eradicate was very easy to use. I incorporate in two passes and get better grass control than with the lasso we used to incorporate. It worked just great this year, even with the dry conditions we've had. Eradicate is workable. See your dealer. Sid and I have been known to disagree. But, Mark, we both enjoy interviewing those sports personalities. That's right, Sid. So along with Dave Mona, we're hosting the Breakfast of Champions, a live WCCO radio show, and you're invited. Yeah, right from the Behrman Practice Facility at the University on January 15th and 10 to 1, Mark. It'll be an exciting Sunday. We're going to have sports celebrities from the Twins, Vikings, Gophers, North Stars, Timberwolves. And how about the wrestlers? Tickets are just $5, and you really do get a breakfast. I thought we'd get bagel. Maybe uh, croissants. You'll pick up the check, Mark? Can I become a close personal friend of yours? All this week on Live, join me and Kathy Lee along with our guest Dick Cavett and the latest new singing sensation from California with the Motown sound mm. of the boys. boys will sing for us. And we'll also be joined by one of daytime TV's most popular soap families, the cast of Ryan's Hope will be with us to reminisce about their 10-year run in daytime drama. Yeah, it's all over. Plus, the world's best chili champ with his fabulous award-winning chili recipe that'll tingle your taste buds. Mm. Monday at 9 on Channel 4. dimension a look at a magazine nearly all of us have looked at in fact you may have even paged through a copy today it is the Dayton Hudson magazine called today published between 25 and 30 times a year and distributed in Sunday newspapers Dayton's calls today magazine its prime vehicle to reach customers in fact they estimate some three million people receive the supplement each time it's published this is the fourth year Dayton's has been sending today into homes and while store officials wouldn't talk about the cost of putting the magazine together they would say today is their best use of advertising dollars we wanted to see how this magazine comes together so we followed the progress of the issue you found in your Sunday paper today a process that began last fall October 26th, the first meeting, 11 weeks before the Today magazine reaches your home. What we're going to be doing is the whole collection. Buy one, save 25%. Buy two or more, save a third. This meeting is with Dayton's buyers and the art director of Today, who leads a staff of five. You're missing um, two gold tones, one button and one um, mobile earring. The buyers have certain products they must move. They present the sizes and colors of each product to Bill Blado, Today Magazine art director. And we really talk it through, and because we do this with the same people week after week, and we have a pretty high success level, it, yeah, it's very, it works. November 3rd, a second meeting with the buyers. They approve the copy. I don't know if I like the word bands. And the layout. What does the little parentheses mean? That that's going to be in bold? Once that's done, the fun begins. The models and makeup artists are from New York. Well, this is working, this color on you. The colors and lighting are soft to highlight the clothes. Dayton's hires out-of-town photographers and models to give its magazine a look not seen in other local publications. The move has made some in the local fashion industry angry. But Dayton's defends the out-of-towners, saying they give Dayton's a fresh, contemporary look. For those products that don't need models to show them, another studio and another photographer. Once the photographs are taken, transparencies must be looked at to make sure the products look good. The leg going to be important. Yes. Five days later, Bill Blado chooses the photographs for publication. The sweater's better here. The photos are then sent to the printer and checked for color and copy mistakes. Were we able to get more of the texture that we were trying to achieve in the sweater? Well, I think a little bit, just because of the fact that we've gone up in size here. Yeah, so this is the final proof, and this is the sample. We are quite close to right. it. It's not bad. No, I think it looks great, and I think this one looks great too. 
Once Blado is satisfied, it's time to get the approval of Dayton's corporate executives. Here it is. Okay, that looks great. Thank you. Blado makes the rounds on the sixth floor of the downtown Minneapolis store. We're going to be able to see that? Yes, and we'll double check on wet proof. That, well, by the time you... Okay. Looks good to me. Thank you. The executives make very few changes. So on December 16th, there's one last look at the final proofs. I would not ask you to add blue to that red shirt. No, 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 no. We're just talking about up here in the tents mm -hmm. is the problem. I think the red came up real nice. On the 20th, the printing begins at a printer in Des Moines, Iowa. By January 4th, Today Magazine is in the Twin Cities. Here, workers at the Star Tribune organize the ads in the comic section of the Sunday paper. The paper that you found at a newsstand or on your doorstep this morning. Hi, Mom and Dad. Here's a videotape we made on the free Florida vacation we got from Best Buy. We've already been to Disney World. Epcot and SeaWorld. We spent three nights right near Orlando, and now we're at Daytona Beach for two days of rest and sun. It's a great trip. Buy any item priced over $299 at Best Buy and get a free Florida vacation. Hundreds of items qualify, like this sharp 25-inch color TV for just $299.99. Transportation's not included, but there are no strings, no gimmicks, and no timeshare. So if you want to go to Florida, hurry to Best Buy. Listen to how farmers use eradicane that make it just as easy to work with as dual or lasso. Bennett? I played uh, eradicane with 28% nitrogen and made two passes with the field cultivator. The performance was just unbelievable, and it worked much better than the dual I incorporated. And you, Jerry? My dealer impregnated eradicane on dry fertilizer and made two passes with the field cultivator. I was making a tillage pass before I incorporated lasso anyway. Eradicane is workable. See your dealer. He's been in jail for 20 years, convicted of killing his seven children. But now there's new evidence. It appears James Richardson is innocent, railroaded by small town authorities. I don't understand why they do these things to me and my wife and my family. Monday afternoon at 4.30 on Channel 4. In low-calorie liquid protein diets, people have died, continue to die, and they can be dead. And that is correct. On the next Sally Jesse Raphael, why all the craze for liquid diets? When you're that big, you really have to take off a huge amount of weight just to feel human. We are treating people who have morbid obesity. I feel wonderful. I'm a new person because of this. Liquid diets. We'll weigh the facts on the next Sally. Monday at 3 on Channel 4. Another fatal house fire in the Twin Cities tonight. This one in St. Paul at 956 Central. At least two are dead, three others injured. Pat Kester at the scene has more information. Pat? Mike, uh, firefighters were called to the scene here at about 12 minutes to 10 o'clock. They found two bodies on the first floor of this house here. Now out in front in this below zero weather on the front lawn of this house are two bodies. 36-year-old Clara Knowles and her 12-year-old son Dwight. Eric Knowles, uh, another boy who lived in this house, is at the hospital now, said to be in serious condition, according to firefighters. And Mr. Dwight Knowles is also at the hospital. We do not know his condition. Two fatals here. No cause of the fire yet determined, but uh, the fire is apparently out. There is no smoke. Firefighters are now circling the building, and an arson investigator is on the scene. Once again, two dead at a fire here in St. Paul. 36-year-old Clara Knowles and her 12-year-old son, Dwight. Pat, any word uh, on a possible cause? No word on possible cause yet at all. Uh, firefighters have only been here for 30 to 40 minutes, so we don't know anything. All right, thank you. Good work. Earlier we had said three dead. That apparently is wrong. Two confirmed dead and one seriously injured uh, at the hospital. Nasty weather to be out fighting fires. Oh, boy. Wouldn't be much worse, No, could it? not unless the wind were blowing. At least mm -hmm. the winds have died down. You all survived the um, storm, I guess. <laughs> uh, officially, 3.6 uh, inches up to midnight last night. 1.4 
between midnight and when it's kind of slackened off. We've had flurries off and on all day for a total of five inches of snow, and that's why you're going to have to park your cars other than where you normally do for the snow emergencies overnight tonight. Uh, notice the, uh, the fog that's lifting from just about every smokestack, and uh, this is the Fauché Tower that becomes obscured from time to time from the steam plant here in downtown Minneapolis. Uh, Lloyd Gottschalk shot this for us. Look at the high temperature for the day today, if you can call it that. Three above, the low, five below, is our current reading officially since midnight, 1.4 inches of snow, 0.08 inches of precipitation. So that's, at least we're adding moisture. We need it, uh, even though it causes some mild inconveniences for us here through the winter months. Take a look at our conventional satellite. We don't show this to you too often. We show you the 4D. We wanted to show you this one because all of this dark area up here is not cloud cover that we would ordinarily expect with the cold tops to the clouds. That is cold ground. The skies are clear up there, and this indicates areas where the temperature at the surface has already dropped to 20 degrees below zero or colder. So some very, very cold air up to the north, and it is spreading on into a southeasterly direction. Here's our 4D satellite. You can see that move along. We had some cloud cover up there for a while. Those clouds finally moving on to the east, leaving nothing but clear skies behind. Also quite a little bit of uh, cloud cover on down to the southeast. That's the leading edge of that cold air that's been pushing on to the south. Well. With the skies clearing and with the snow cover up to the north, you'd expect to see some low temperatures, and indeed they are. We said they'd be 20 below. Well, 21 below at Grand Forks, 21 below at Fargo, 20 degrees below zero out at uh, Bismarck, and all that cold air is drifting southward. Now, we still have a little bit of wind out there, and you couple the wind uh, with those temperatures, and these are wind chills still in the uh, 20 to uh, 40 below range outside, so still very, very cold. If you're outside uh, overnight, early morning, you still need to protect yourself. That exposed skin can freeze very, very quickly. There's where the precipitation is. Nothing but rain so far, but a winter storm warning has been issued now for parts of North Carolina as that cold air couples with the moisture. They're expecting to see some snow uh, breaking out over there. For us, a return to sunshine tomorrow, cold sunshine, Arctic high pressure over us. Next weather system off the coast, we'll be contending with that here coming up a little bit later on in the week. High temperatures in the meantime in the single digits over us for highs tomorrow, low single digits below zero up in the northwestern corner of the state and much of North Dakota. Very, very cold air for the next few days. All right, let's take a look at our current conditions. It's partly cloudy and five below. With the winds out of the west at nine, it feels like 24 degrees below zero, and the barometer is rising as that high pressure area builds southward out of Canada, 3.26 and rising. Flurries ending. We've had some flurries as early as uh, an hour ago. Now skies are just partly cloudy. I think maybe the flurries are pretty well over with. Clearing and colder tonight, 12 degrees below zero. Eight below is as cold as we've been so far this season. If we get to 12, that'll be the lowest, and it looks like we will reach that. Southwest at five to 10 miles an hour. Tomorrow, sunny but cold, three degrees. The winds will be fairly light, though. Southwest, five to 15. That'll still give us wind chills probably in the 15 to 25 below range. Partly cloudy, a few flurries tomorrow night. Eight below for a low temperature. And for Tuesday, mostly sunny, slowly warming up, a high temperature of 13 degrees. The extended outlook Wednesday, all the way up into the 20s with a chance of some flurries. That'll be as that weather system on the west coast approaches us. Thursday and Friday, mostly cloudy, but uh, moderating. We'll get up to near 30 degrees by Friday. That'll probably give us some snow melt. The salt's not even very effective in melting this. <laughs> no. I've never driven on slipperier roads than they it's were today. It's been awful. It really bet. has been. Thank Be you. careful out there. Thanks. Super Bowl lineup is set, and we'll show you who goes to Miami next in sports. Some banks are clever at covering up their low savings rates. I have some money to invest. With a six-month CD, you get one blanket. With a 12-month CD, you get two blankets. And you see... What Excuse me, but what about your savings rates? Savings rates? At SCCU, we don't need blankets to cover up our savings rates. They're the most competitive in Minnesota. Call 291-SCCU to get more for your money than a cover-up. I'll bet she wanted a toaster. traditions. Microwave hamburger, fish, and chicken sandwiches. You'll be surprised to taste this good came from your microwave. New traditions from Hormel. January is a perfect time to visit Alaskan fur. Cold weather, beautiful furs, and special savings during our January fur clearance sale. Alaskan has the coat that's just right for you. Clearance price through the end of the month. 
Select from mink, fox, sable, raccoon, and many others reduced from 50 to 70%. Alaskan's fashion specialists are ready to help you select the fur of your dreams, but hurry in and make your selection before your fur walks out the door. These seven tons of bone-crushing flesh, three stories of sheer terror, and what you're going to find out about him will stop you dead in your tracks. Journey with the infinite voyage on the great dinosaur hunt, part of Digital Equipment Corporation's Discovery Series. It's television that brings you the wonder of it all. Monday night at 7 on Channel 4. known as McMahon. When I hit the turf, I've got no plan. I just throw my body all over the field. I can't dance, but I can throw the field. Well, move over, Bears. The Super Bowl shuffle has been replaced by the icky shuffle on the NFL hit parade. Cincinnati will shuffle down to Miami while the Bills shuffle their feet back to Buffalo. Meanwhile, the Bengals will take on the 49ers, who struck gold on Soldier Field today. Seven years ago, San Francisco beat Cincinnati in the Super Bowl. That rematch is coming up in just two weeks. You know, Mike and I have some crow to eat tonight. We laughed when Tom Hanneman said yeah. that the 49ers would win today. Well, like we I've laughed. said all along, all year, it's going to be Cincinnati and San Francisco. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, wait he a minute. didn't say that either. Come on. <laughs> Can't you just uh, imagine the headline tomorrow is going to say, the Bears and Buffalo cash in their chips. And... Um, <laughs> Don't laugh. No, you know, it really makes me wonder. We just encourage him here. It makes me, <laughs> makes me wonder why, uh, you know, with the way San Francisco used Jerry Rice, five touchdowns in two games, why the Vikings couldn't somehow get the ball to Anthony Carter. Yeah, we can think point. about that all winter oh, long winter. now. Yes, okay. well, on a uh, frozen field in Chicago, today it was the hometown Bears who were colder than the weather and the 49ers who got hot, burning a path to Miami with a 28-3 win. With a wind chill at 33 below, both teams got off to a slow start, but toward the end of the first quarter, the rice began to boil over in Chi-Town, folks. Jerry Rice, that is, or maybe we should say Miami Rice. Joe Montana connected with his all-world receiver, 61-yard TD, 7-0, 49er lead. Second quarter, the Bears behind Jim McMahon struggled to move the ball. McMagic got intercepted by Jeff Fuller just when it looked like the Bears might threaten. Soon after, the Niners once again got a taste of the San Francisco treat. Montana and Rice for a 27-yard scoring strike, a 14-0 lead. It was the fifth TD in two games for Rice. Near the end of the half, the Niners' defense made a teddy bear out of McMahon, knocking the stuffing out of him. The Bears appeared they might get six, but they settled for a Kevin Butler field goal, trailed 14-3 at the half. Second half, the story again the same. Niners made life unbearable for Chicago. Montana found John Frank, 21-3 lead. San Fran's human bowling ball, Tom Rathman, put the icing on the cake in the frozen finale with a five-yard touchdown romp. 28-3 lead and a ticket to Super Bowl 23 in Miami. A disappointing finish for the Bears. Yes, but cheer up, Dan Hampton. First three-round picks coming up for the Bears in a few months. But the Cincinnati Bengals await the 49ers in a couple of weeks. Went into the game feeling we were quicker than Chicago, quicker by the man, that we moved faster and, and we were just quicker. And we've been playing that kind of defense all year, and, and, it, and it turned out to be that way. We're just a little quicker team this time around. Uh, we're proud of our guys. We tried. Uh, we knew we had some shortcomings because of the injuries we had, and uh, I don't know. It just didn't work out today. But, you know, I, in our defeat, we can't take anything away from them and their victory. It was great for them. And we backed off a little bit, and we came into the game fresh. I'll tell you what, those five guys up in front of me deserve a whole lot of credit because they played a good front four today and played well. And what a turnaround for the Cincinnati Bengals. Last year, they wound up with a disappointing 4-11 and record. Well, you know what happened today. The Bengals are Miami-bound thanks to a 21-10 defeat of Buffalo. Bills quarterback Jim Kelly picked off three times. This one by Eric Thomas put the Bengals in scoring position in the first quarter. Kelly had trouble reading the Bengals' defense, but Riverfront Stadium had no trouble reading this play. It spelled touchdown time in the jungle and time to dance the Icky Shuffle. Rookie sensation Icky Wood scored for a 7-0 lead. And, of course, that means, yes, the Icky Shuffle. Some may say Sicky from Icky, but uh, others may say the Icky Shuffle is Mickey. Mickey Mouse, that is. Whatever the case, it sells in Cincinnati. Bills got those seven back in the second quarter. Kelly to Andre Reed. It ended one of a few drives. It started with good field position. 
The Bengals then drove 74 yards, and this lob from Boomer Esaias to James Brooks was the last play. Nice touch by the Boomer there for the TD. That gave Cincinnati a 14-7 lead. It was 14-10 at the break. Coming up is a bonehead Buffalo Bill. This great defensive play by Shane Conlon erased by Derek Burroughs. Here's Mr. Bonehead. Burroughs takes a shot at Tim McGee with his elbow. A penalty and injection, uh, ejection followed. Instead of third and eight, it was first and four. Burroughs not well received on the Bills' sideline. Here, head coach Marv Levy says, chill out. Burroughs retorts with, doggone, I'm innocent. Anyway, on the first play of the fourth quarter, Icky Woods takes advantage of the situation. 21-10 Bengals. Meanwhile... Buffalo Bill Bonehead Burroughs pleads his case, but his teammates say, shut up, Bonehead. Across the field, Bengals coach Sam Weish got into a fight with one of his players, a Gatorade fight. A year ago, fans wanted uh, him tired and a little feather action there. What a difference a year makes. Cincinnati on the way to the Super Bowl. Well, Steve Jones won the first stop on the PGA Tour, the Tournament of Champions in Carlsbad, California today. In the senior competition, watch here, Miller Barber, dramatic shot on 18 to win it. Good line there, Bob. <laughs> Good line. He's the winner. Unbelievable. Floyd. All right, Steve and Jones, as for Steve Jones, Jones, this birdie on 17 clinched his three-shot win over Jay Haas and David Frost. Jones won 135 grand for his second-ever PGA win. Tonight at Williams Arena, Marie Roethlisberger tied the Gophers' record on the uneven bars. And here it is for you. Beautiful. Roethlisberger received a 9.85 from the judges, tying the school mark she set last year. The Gophers beat Winona State with Kathy Zolkowski winning the all-around. Today at Highland Hills in Bloomington, artistry on skis is one way to describe the Upper Midwest Ballet Ski Competition. Photographer Keith Chanel chose this way to describe it. Beautiful. It's nearly not as difficult as they make it look. <laughs> uh, the Gopher women's basketball team beat Michigan today, 84 to 69. Ellen Kramer had 24 points, and that is a good about going right. to do it. Well, who All do you right. like in the in the Super Bowl? Whoever I pick, go the other way. I'm going with San Francisco. <laughs> I'll take Cincinnati. <laughs> I'm going to wait till next week. The 10 p.m. report continues in just a moment. <laughs> Well, earlier tonight here on Channel 4, you may have seen some familiar scenery in a CBS movie. And your eyes do not deceive you. The comeback was shot in part here in the Twin Cities. Now, who can identify this idyllic locale? Certainly, it's not the Minneapolis lakes. The homes are too close to the shore. Could it be Minnetonka? Could be. Well, whatever. It certainly looks warm. And could this be the busy newsroom of a major metropolitan TV station? You bet it is. It is the Channel 4 newsroom where some of the scenes were filmed earlier this year or last year. Where am I? Where is Cindy, you ask? Nowhere to be seen. A mere oversight, the producers assure us. Where's Ralph? Where's Mike? Where is housewife <laughs> locker room? <laughs> Coming up next fall. <laughs> right, yeah. No. It's the newest night, thing. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>